Hey, Stop Flippers, we're back. We're trying this all over again. As you saw in our last one, we finally finished up looking at a house. We just couldn't make the numbers work. We were just a little bit short. So we're gonna start back over. We're hitting the MLS again, and today we're gonna be a lot more prompt. We're starting in here, we're gonna hit the MLS, and we're hitting the road right away because Eric said it the first time. If you don't get it quick, probably not gonna get it. So we need to move and shake. So we're starting over again. Let's take a look at it. Eric, we're starting right back at the beginning. Same thing, right? Maybe right the screen. Um, just real quick run through. We already, we've already gone over this. We're trying to get get through these as fast as we can, get on the streets, try to be the first one there. So, South. Investment property has a tenant in it. It expires 6 9 17. Now let's talk about this. This is important. If you buy this house right now, we there can't. is a lease in place until June. 6 yeah. 9 17. Now, you can put something in the contract that says tenant must be out and it's up to the tenant and the landlord whether or not they work something out. I've also put in there that I'll pay $1,000 to the tenant if they move out, kind of a cash for keys thing. Right. Um, or the landlord will, you know, can pay it. So you want to make sure, because I've actually bought them and skipped right past that and <laughs> sat on that property for five months. Right. I collected rent, but I'm not in the rent business. Right, right. So... That's and another something. question I have. So right here it says that you have to have proof of funds. I mean, is this like one of those James Bond thing? You have to take a suitcase <laughs> full of money because I would love that. Actually. Yeah, you just gotta like open it up, you know. No, and anytime, anytime you're buying a cash deal, they they want to make sure that that you're legit. So um, bank statements. I mean, how do you do this? Well, I mean, we have uh, our bank actually prints off a thing from the bank from the president, and it just says they've got X Line millions of, of dollars or whatever. Yeah to work with and they're good. So we'll send that over. Also, if you're a corporation, they're gonna to wanna to see your, your corporate docs and, and all that good stuff. So we got everything printed, right? Right. We're gonna go get those. Get on the road. Get on the road. We're going quicker this time. Yeah. Lesson learned, we're going right now. We're getting in the All car. right, here we are, 207 Neff. $55,000. Now we've already been to two houses. We just nixed them off the first one. I'll let Eric explain. The second one was on Lano and I'm not real sure what the deal was, but it was just, uh, it was like an industrial park. It wasn't actually an address. So uh, we double, triple checked it. Not sure if it was just in the MLS wrong or what the problem was, but it was not a real house. So Eric, tell us about Money Street. Money Street. Uh, Money Street is on a place uh, in a neighborhood that I do not want to spend any money on. Uh, we actually owned a house. I didn't realize it until after the fact, um, right around the corner. Uh, I couldn't sell it. The neighbors, it was like the, you know, the neighbors from hell kind of a thing. Uh, every time I went to go show it or my sales guys went to go show it, the neighbors were coming over there, giving them a hard time. A lot of like drug dealers and stuff up and down, people sitting out. We saw some today sitting out drinking beer, you know, all day long. And the old man that lived next door, probably in his late 60s, early 70s, always had his vehicles parked in my yard and in the driveway. I, uh, I'm frustrated. We've had the house for almost a year. We couldn't sell it. This guy's being a pain in my butt. I pull up one day frustrated, you know, see the car there, pull out my camera, on my, I mean, pull out my phone and start acting like I'm, you know, getting his license plate because he's sitting over here, you know, with his grandkids drinking beer. And he comes over there all flustered and, you know, starts you know, mumbling under his breath and he's all hot and heavy and, you know, jumping in his, his truck and then gets out of his truck and comes over with his phone and he's pointing his phone back at me, taking pictures of me, you know, going, I can take pictures too. I can take pictures too. And so I realized that this is escalating very quickly and, you know, it's best if I just leave the situation. So I get in my truck, drive down the road. As soon as I got to the corner, I heard just truck beer peeling out. He comes out of the driveway, flies down behind me. I make that turn. I'm going to leave the subdivision. He flies in front of me, pulls right in front, slams on the brakes. I can't, like he blocks me in basically jumps out of his truck, this is an old man, comes flying up to my window, cussing and yelling and taking his phone and snapping pictures of me, like just loses his mind. I back up, I'm freaking out, I back up, go around him, he's cussing and yelling at me, and at that point I was just like, get rid of this property, I don't care, I'm never buying a house over here again, and I haven't. And so today was kind of like a trip down memory lane. We drove the same street and uh, yeah, I want nothing to do with that. So. Be careful in the areas you buy because you don't want to end up in a situation like that. Um, luckily, we did end up selling that house. 
uh, and you know it, it's it's a uh, it's a lesson that you got to learn the hard way. It's going to happen eventually. You're going to buy a house in a war zone, but try to drive up and down the streets in the area, and you know if you see people sitting out there, you know drinking beer at 10 o'clock in the morning. Probably not an area you wanna you wanna buy a house in. And now you know why we don't have any video. As he's telling yeah. me this story, we avoided that like the plague. <laughs> All right, so no cameras. Yeah. So good idea. No beer drinking prior. Let's say noon. Noon is probably a good day. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here we are. Nef 207 Neff. Do a pan around and look at all the, the, the cracks in the ceiling. It's gonna be some sheetrock. This is just bad taping. Um, I don't see any water damage at this point. I just kind of walked in here and taking it all in. The foundation's a little off in the kitchen in here. You'll notice it, it kind of falls downhill, you know. It's kind of leaning this way. Um, I like the built-in, though. Yeah, it's it's not bad, you know, and you can spruce this up pretty quickly with a good, you know, kind of place for your This right here um, is a water heater closet. That's why you have a little vent right there. I would remove that and we typically put those outside, build a little closet. For some reason, a lot of water heaters are in the kitchens of these places, um, probably due to plumbing accessibility, you know, it's right here. And that's just kind of how they were done. We'd like to get them out of there, open up the kitchen some more. Look at that. How cute is that? Aww. I do like it. Cozy. We got some good carpet here, we can probably reuse it. Oh yeah. You know? Never mind the dust. <laughs> you know what's sad is that was probably in here. Like they were probably living with like this. Oh, bathroom. Wow. Yeah, let me get my let me get some light in here. This is god awful. Does that help any? A little bit. Look at all the, the mold on the ceiling, which means it's not properly ventilated. Look at the window seal. You know, you have a wooden window in a shower. So that's getting wet all the time. And that, this whole bathroom just needs to be gutted. I mean, all right, gut the entire bathroom. Don't breathe. Well, thanks for telling me now. In here, same thing. She rock paint, the ceiling's got some cracks. Why do they have all this Tyvek tape on here? What's I mean, up with this? Probably, uh... Oh, it's plastic. Broken window, or to keep the... When it probably wouldn't seal right. Drafty. Yeah, drafty, that's a better word. This is the Master Suite. It boasts a beautiful 10 by 10 room. It's actually not a bad size no, room. it's not bad. The flooring is awesome. Yeah, it's just the foundation it needs to be leveled. It's not a bad house. I mean, it's scary as hell, but you know, you got the bathroom, pull up the floor, level it, sheetrock paint, refinish the wood floors, and you're kind of good to go. I'd probably make a run at it. All right. Driving around scares paying off today. <laughs> oh, they're Titans fans. Dude, out of everybody in the AFC South, why would you be a Titans fan? Let's go, uh, in case anybody's wondering, the Texans are where it's at in the AFC South. <laughs> the $72 million quarterback. Let's go look <laughs> at the, uh, the backyard. Uh, so you can see a lot of wood rot. If you'll zoom in around the window, you can see a lot of wood rot. You know, we'll have to rip those out and replace them. And, uh, one thing I, I'm trying to look for right now is access to make sure that this is a pier and beam. I mean, I can see it is right there. You got a hole. I just need to see what it looks like under there and how much room I have to get my guys in there. Be careful, you got nails right here. Whoa. You're gonna love this. <laughs> this this is the most beautiful porch I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh man. We're gonna definitely keep this. If we can buy it. Oh, there we go. Oh. All right, so here's kind of what I was worried about. If you'll get down there, oh. get all up in the mud. Send the rug. But you're going to see that, that that foundation is just kind of sitting. Yeah, I'm not sure how they would tunnel in there. May have to go from the inside where they cut a hole in the floor. 
and they go down on the inside, dig out trenches. Sorry, it's not going to be an easy foundation job. So it needs a roof. It's got a nice size yard though. Yeah, it's great yard. Could it's use like a the bump. roof is real kind of sunk in and caved in. I don't know, man. It's a pretty big rehab for your first one, but we can make a run at it. They're asking 55. I wouldn't touch it for more than about 35. So the chances of us getting this are probably some to none, but. All right, here we are, 850 something. 85, what is it? 85, 8503 rain dance. We drove by another house. I can't remember which one it was. Again, just not feeling it, just driving down the neighborhood. So we don't want to even get out and take a look at it. We got to save our time. We got a lot to do. So we're at 8503. Actually, it's not a bad neighborhood, um, I don't think. Eric's saying that it was kind of a rough side of town. He said this is actually somewhere where in the previous video where he said the kids were trying to set the house on fire. He said it was around this area, but it's not too bad of a neighborhood. Nice, nice digs. Looks pretty good, pretty clean. This is a nice lot over here on the corner. Let's go inside, take a look. Now that Eric got it figured out. What do we got in here? Yeah. Oh man, that's some Art Deco stuff at the top. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. Taking it all in, taking it all in. Taking it out of the shower curtain. That's nice. We you say the foundation? Uh, it goes a little bit over here, kind of falls off a little bit. It's hard to see, but you can feel it. The kitchen's big and nice. I mean, straightforward. I don't like popcorn ceiling, but we can fix that. Yeah, my house I just bought had popcorn ceiling in it, and uh... it's not bad unless someone paints over it, and then it's a pain in the butt to get off. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was just it was dusty. Central. Central. It's always a good sign. So this is weird that they got all this. What would we do, like accordion doors or something? Yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want to use a shower curtain. I don't know. Stain resistant. It probably goes into the garage. Yeah, this is the first one we've looked at that's got a proper garage. One car garage. Now you're backed up to a drainage ditch. You know, that's a little funky. But uh, I think we can uh, go take a look outside if you want. Would it be worth Putting up a privacy fence, maybe? Yeah, definitely put a privacy fence. We'll, we'll look at that when we go outside. All right, so another weekend warrior project. So downsides would be obviously traffic noise, because you're right there on the street. Um, however, you know, a good privacy fence probably could solve that. It's a lot of privacy fence. I mean, you're looking at probably four grand, maybe five grand. Here, hold this. Here, hold my beer. Hold my beer. It's harder. Push your. Hold on a minute. Is it a. <laughs> it's a nice. You can't open the door? Nice shit. I don't. A mystery door. Shopping cart for you. Oh, yeah. You want a buggy? <laughs> Load up all our goods in here. Get the shoes. Put them in here. <laughs> it's the only door. Dude, I'm gonna freak out if there's like a dead body in here or something. Did you see that movie Room? No. This could be it. Pull it towards you. Oh, this not gonna work. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Pull it towards you. The hinges are on the inside. Weird. <laughs> Should we knock? I wonder. No clue. Well, you tried and you failed. That <laughs> is real. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think about 10,000 in rehab, including the fence. Yeah. And uh, didn't sell it. So I think we got a really good shot at this one, Tyler. All right. Finally, let's get some. Okay, we are at 25, 70 cent, whatever, Sleepy Valley. So you can see the house here behind me. We decided we really like it, other than some very angry dogs that are over here. But we can't get in. The super key's not working. It's some sort of Bluetoothy digital realtor thing to let, uh, let us get inside, and we can't seem to get that working right now. So. What Eric wants to do is he wants to take a stab at this. This was uh, priced right at $70,000. Well, when we get back to the office, we're going to take a stab at it, see what we can get, uh, put an option period on it, and hopefully come back and try and get in later because it is a pretty nice neighborhood. It's out here on a cul-de-sac. Um, it's quiet. It's not really near anything, so it's pretty nice. And as you can see, the house has been well taken care of, at least on the outside. So we'll try it. We'll try anything. So okay, last house of the day. We've been doing this all day. Quite frankly, I'm exhausted. I know Eric's exhausted. So last house of the day, and we're looking at Yolanda Drive. Beautiful blue house. Got some nice trim work going on here. 
Decent neighborhood. Not too bad. Looks like they take pretty good care of it. There's this one creepy house that I would not go in if I was you. But the rest of the neighborhood's pretty nice. We're going to head inside. 243 Yolanda. <laughs> okay, well, we got to go around the back of this one. And uh, to go check out the house. And when we went to open the gate, it fell over. So we can check things out from the back side of the house. We'll start back here. All right, not a bad place. You can tell they just came through and textured everything. Brand new texture, but no paint. Probably need some new window seals. But that's just in this room. Yeah, beautiful wood floors. We can get these all. Stick and span. Uh, kitchen obviously needs uh, the cabinets painted. And everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, uh, uh. Cool. Dude, I thought that was cool too. Yeah, that's old school. Kind of retro. Maybe gussy that up. Um, pretty straightforward, dude. I would probably let the bathroom redo it unless you like Smurf Blue. Yeah. We have a lot of Smurf stuff today. For real. Like, like blues out. Blues color. Blue is now out. Right, look at this. <laughs> now I'm excited. Woo! Uh, termites. Ah, here's some termite damage. And how do we know it's termite damage? Well, because I used to be in the pest control business for a long time. But you can tell with the, the grooves in here, and then there's like mud. See all the little mud in here? Yeah. And then, if you come in here, can you get in here? See all the, the mud? Now these aren't active right now, but that's all termite damage. And typically it comes because you have a leak in the bathroom, because termites like the moisture. So, this all this subfloor in here and all this foundation is probably all rotted out like this so we're gonna have to come in here and cut all this out blow this whole bathroom out and redo it so that's gonna be pretty costly so we want to take that into consideration like how costly <sighs> who knows is this a five thousand ten thousand dollar no i mean you, you it depends on what it looks like i mean you got to cut this wood floor out so you're going to have wood floor repair this all has to come out, the whole bathroom has to come out, all that flooring has to come out so that you can get access to these boards. Because this is a slab and then they just have the, uh, the wood on top of it. So you're going to have to replace those runners, put new flooring down, bathroom. You know, your bathroom's going to probably cost you 2500 bucks. You probably got another thousand or so in wood repair, paint, you know. So, <coughs> next question, how do you know they're inactive? I mean, obviously we well, didn't see it. Obviously you didn't see it. I don't know if the whole house is inactive. I mean, there's no reason why they wouldn't still be here if there's, you know, still a lot of evidence. There's still food for them. But what I would do is just have, you know, my dad's got the businesses that I had started and he would just come over here, treat around the outside and we'd be good to go. I actually, once I opened it up, I'd have him treat around, around that. Yeah, I like it. I couldn't run it, but the problem is, is that they got it listed at seventy-four thousand dollars, and this is like a eighty-four thousand dollars house, so it's it's tight. So we're already at the top end of our budget. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to do some number crunching. 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 It doesn't really need much. It, it looks deceiving, but it really doesn't need much. And I could be getting out of here in like two weeks. The outside is fine. It's already got texture. It needs some paint, it needs some windows. The bathroom gut, that's easy. I got, you know, three guys here for half a day. That's all gutted, you know, put it back together. Sand the wood floors, refinish them, and sell it. How many bedrooms? One, two, three? No, it's not. It's, I would probably. It's, it's got a closet. I would There's consider a, converting it back. But There's a closet right here. Or give the buyer an option. Now here's the old else. fuse box. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna have to be upgraded. That's gonna cost a couple grand. So, you know, maybe uh, 10 grand in rehab, you know, so. This you, episode brought to you by Rain. <laughs> you got 89.9 minus what we want to make gross minus 10. So 55,000 would be our maximum allowable offer. It's listed at 75,000. So that's a twenty thousand dollar hickey. I doubt they're going to take. Now, you know, it doesn't have central. If it had central, we might want to get a little bit more. 
I'm gonna pull up realtor.com real quick. I like to use this app just on the fly, like if I'm out here doing something, uh, just to see what's for sale around here. So you got a house for 159, you got a house for 114, 107, 90, 95,000. So, you know, the comps in this area are strong. 107, completely remodeled. 90, remodeled. 114, brick exterior. I still like my 89.9 number. But if we had to squeeze it up to 94.9? I, I wouldn't. Um, I'm gonna run my numbers again. Yeah. You know, without Central, that's gonna be hard. Um, no, I'd, I'd like to say an 89.9. I mean, like you want these to work so badly, like these good ones, you know, that I've actually overpaid on them, you know, and regretted it later. So you're just gonna have to take the emotions out of it. Like, I really like this house. Like, I mean, this is a really good house. I want it. You know, and you start thinking, oh, well, you know, get it for 60. And maybe you can save five grand on the rehab or something like that. It never yeah. works out. You know, then you, that, that's whenever you usually end up spending more money. And so now you're doubled down on the negative side. But And who's going to pick up the fence you broke? <laughs> Eric did that. Oh, hurry up, I locked him in. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's not a very good fence. Whenever you unlock it, and the whole damn thing just falls over. Literally being held up. Are you gonna sit here and film me? I, oh, this is the best part of the day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cause something else. <laughs> something might happen. Where'd the key go? Where'd the, uh, the lock? We do like the fake reality TV shows where we act like it, it falls, you know? <laughs> Why not? Like we'll cut to commercial right now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give the good face. Take two. Do it again. <laughs> All right, we're back at the Casa. Finished up for the day. We made offers on four houses. Some of them low ball and hopefully we'll get them back. We'll let you know as soon as we hear something. The contracts are going in today, right, Eric? They're going in today, so hopefully we'll have something back tomorrow. We got a meeting. Uh, Eric and I are going to meet tomorrow for lunch. We'll see what we can do. Acting a little bit quicker this time, I think I learned my lesson.